Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome and thanks for joining me today for uh, this session, Do's and Don't of Pull Request and uh, Bug Triage in Open Source Projects. Uh, my name is Sadeh Zala. Uh, and uh, just a little bit about me in context of this talk. Uh, I am an open source developer at IBM, contributing, contributing to different open source projects for over eight years. I'm a contributor to Kubernetes. I'm a co-lead uh, for Kubernetes IBM Cloud Provider. Uh, and I'm also a maintainer, one of the maintainer for the etcd project. Uh, previously, I was a significant contributor for OpenStack as a core reviewer. And uh, uh, a technical committee member for OSS Tosca. So in this talk, I will share my experience uh, of Git and GitHub uh, in working with pull request and uh, issue triage uh, to help uh, you know new contributors to get on board and uh, learn some of the best practices. <clears throat> um, all right. So I assume that uh, you know you already know the gates and GitHub to some extent at least, uh, but uh, real quick here, um, let me just go over what is a pull request and what do I mean by issue triage. Uh, pull request in GitHub, uh, you can, uh, you know, you create a pull request uh, for the changes that you would like to have merged into the base branch of the project where, uh, you know, um, whatever, whatever the open source project you are contributing to. And you know it allows you to collaborate with uh, other developers and the maintainers of the project, uh, so that they can review your changes and you know uh, eventually uh, uh, they merge it if everything is good. Um, issue triage in uh, GitHub uh, issues are used for several different things. Um, so, for example, uh, you know to report a bug, um, to request a feature, to ask a question. You know people use issues for different uh, different uh, needs. So, you know, down the road, uh, you know, depending on the projects, uh, the size and how active the project is and down the road, you can see a pile of issues if they are not managed efficiently, right? So that's where the triage comes in picture. Uh, it helps to speed up the issue management and, you know, it's, it's a process where, uh, you know, the triage engineers, they review the issues and, you know, organize them so that they can be, uh, uh, actionable, right? So some of the categories uh, I mentioned here is, you know, uh, identifying the issue kind, right? Whether it's a bug or it's a feature request or it's just a support question or what kind of uh, issue it is, right? Uh, what kind of priorities can be given to the issues? Is it like high priority or something that can wait, uh, low priority or backlog? Um, and then, you know, who owns that issue, right? Who can own the issue? So put a, a screenshots here um, using Kubernetes as an example. Uh, this is a screen from, uh, from the Kubernetes GitHub repo. As you can see, there's a tab for issues uh, with you know, over 2000 issues are open there. Uh, and then there's a tab for pull request. Uh, Kubernetes has a lot of automations uh, and they're uh, you know, heavily, uh, they heavily use the labels. So you can see uh, one of the issue there with you know, a kind bug label with the priority there. Um, also, like which special interest group in Kubernetes it belongs to, All right? And it still says it needs triage. You know, once uh, someone who has authority uh, to accept this triage, you know, they can change that needs triage to triage accepted label. So every project has a different way of doing things, right? Not every open source project has the same labeling uh, or same way of doing things. Uh, but overall, you know, it's it's similar. Uh, if there are no labels, you know, you can simply um, you know, add comments in the issue as part of triaging. All right, so um, uh, let's talk about pull request, right? So before you start, you know, creating a, a pull request, making change uh, that as that uh, you know you would like to make as part of fixing uh, any issue. Um, you know, when you git clone the project and uh, from the project directory, if you run git branch, you see that you're on master branch, right? So you don't want to create, uh, you know, uh, you don't want to modify the master branch and create a PR uh, from there. And I have seen people doing that, uh, you know, like if uh, probably new com uh, contributors. Uh, but what you should do is, you know, you should create a topic branch. Uh, Git allows you to create, um, you know, uh, any number of branch and you can name those branch, you know, as you prefer. 
uh, and they are lightweighted. Uh, you work on that branch you know, for a particular issue, for a particular fix, and then you, and you can uh, delete those branch eventually. So two things, right? One is to create the branch and then check out, um, or you can do both steps in one command, like git checkout dash p, and then the name of the branch. Like I said, you can give the name as you prefer. It can be a name of the issue you are working on, or it can be something else like you know fix auth or you know other things uh, as you prefer. But after that, if you run git branch, you will see that you are into this new branch you created, right? And so that's where you wanna make uh, changes and uh, eventually you know, push that changes as part of your PR. Uh, this allows you to work on multiple PRs uh, in you know, different branch. Uh, and uh, you, know, you should be using your master branch just to keep uh, it synced with the uh, upstream master branch, right? You know, depending on the uh, project activities, I mean, maybe every hour, maybe, you know, uh, every day, there will be some changes in the upstream, more codes will be merged there, right? Uh, so you wanna keep your master branch in sync with those changes. All right, um, so, uh, you know, you have your topic bunch created and you are, you know, ready to work on changes, you made some changes and you are ready to push those changes to the upstream. Um, you would take care of a few things there uh, before you push, you know. Uh, the first thing is, uh, you know, create a good commit message, right? Typically it's a one-liner title, like a short one-liner uh, about the changes followed by a little bit details in the body of the commit message. Uh, and then if you are working on a specific issue, then also mention uh, the number of that issue there. Um, I have ju just given here like example of one of the commit message there. Um, you know, this helps the reviewers, right? Once you push it, uh, they can look at this and you know, that, that helps them to get some idea about uh, the PR, you know, without even looking at the actual changes. Um, second thing is don't push uh, without making sure that you run all the recommended uh, tests, right? So, you know, uh, all the open source projects, you know, they should have uh, some sort of uh, test set, in unit testing uh, or formatting testing, uh, you know, that kind of things. So uh, make sure that you run those in your local environment uh, before you push it. Um, and the third thing is, if you're adding something uh, new, like you added a new function, for example, right? Uh, some utility function, uh, then make sure you also create a test for that. Uh, this helps speed up the review process. Uh, and uh, you know, every time you create a PR, there is a build processes, you know, uh, the build resources, they run in the background, right, to, to, to do all this testing. Um, so you are you know, utilizing those resources uh, in a better way because you have already tested it uh, and you're giving the reviewers a good way to review the PR. Um, you know, this is one of the topic has seen, uh, been discussed in different projects, you know, time to time that, uh, you know, sometimes people try to create uh, a separate PRs for every little things, right? Uh, like, you know, you're a new contributor, you're looking at the documentation of the project and you run into, you know, some, some broken links, some typos, you know, or sometimes even like looking at the code you have seen, you know, uh, like, like a particular piece of code, which is same in different files, right? Like a one if loop, for example. And then creating a different uh, pull request for you know, each small fixes, you know. Uh, do not do that. You know, try to combine everything into one and, and then push it, right? Um, that doesn't mean that you know, if you only run into one broken link uh, and you don't create a PR because that's just one small change, right? Uh, every kind of improvements is good for the project, but uh, you know, you don't want to create separate things uh, knowing that you can combine them you know at a time and this helps you know to gain the trust in the community people know that you're not playing a number game you know not just trying to increase your number of prs uh, and again you are using the resources in a better way all right so a little bit contradictory to my previous uh, slide you know uh, what if you're working on something big, right? Some substantial changes into the existing code uh, or you know, you're adding a new features with uh, lots of uh, lines of code. In that case, you know, try to break it down into multiple PRs. Uh, if you cannot do that, you know, independent uh, separate PRs that can run on their own and pass the test. 
uh, you can create multiple commits, right? So that helps the reviewers because if it's a huge change, then it's hard to review. Uh, the different commits can help them uh, review it in more efficiently. And second thing is, if you're fixing something uh, and, and you see some other problems, then you know, don't try to fix different things of different contexts into one PR, because that again also confuse the reviewers. Um, so by you know, breaking it down, uh, you help reviewers to review uh, more efficiently. All right, third thing. So let's say you have your branch ready, you, you made changes, you pushed it, everything is good. Now you get some review comments, right? Um, you know, once you get the review comments, please do not close the PR and create a new one. I have seen people doing it and that's not the right thing to do because then, you know, reviewers will need to start everything, uh, you know, from scratch with the new PR, right? Um, in instead of that, you know, use the same PR to address the comments, right? Um, if it's a, again, if it's not a trivial PR, then create a new commit uh, to address the review comments and so that the reviewers can, uh, you know, get the good idea, you know, they can compare the two commits and see what kind of changes you made addressing their comments. And, you know, eventually uh, the reviewers see that everything looks good, they will ask you to squash. So you use the git rebage and squash them into one. So, you know, instead of amending your commit, you know, create a new commit, squash it at the end. And, you know, one, one last thing I would mention here is do not ab abandon the PR, right? Um, some people or some contributors are like, oh, uh, they think the comments that something they cannot address or they don't have time anymore. They just don't reply, you know, um, ideally you should reply and tell the maintainers, reviewers that, uh, you know, uh, help out or you know, assign it to someone else. All right, the, uh, merge complete, that's another thing, right? You know, you, you worked hard, you changed some uh, files, you know, and then you pushed it and then you see this message, uh -oh, there's a conflict. And that can be, you know, disappointing things for as a new contributor, uh, but don't, you know, it's easy to fix the conflict. So do not close the PR and create new one. You know, many times the contributor think it's a good idea to make a, or, you know, create a new clean PR. Don't do that, you know, use the same PR, uh, make sure your master branch is in sync with the uh, the latest upstream, right? You, 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 you fetch the, upstream code, merge it into your master, local master, and, and then in your topic branch where you're working on the issues, you are, you know, you just rebase it there and then push the updates. So that way, uh, you know, the conflicts are resolved properly. Um, all right, um, so uh, next thing, uh, just a minute on triaging issues, um, considering the time, uh, Limit we have. I'm going a little bit faster, but you know, please ask me questions uh, uh, at the end, or you know, reach out to me on my uh, Twitter with the DM if we cannot have uh, time to you know have more Q and A at the end. But anyway, so triaging issues, uh, like I said, triaging is important. You know, uh, uh, especially when you see a lot of issues out there. I right? don't, you don't definitely want to pile them up. So participate in the triaging. It, you know, you may not find it exciting as, you know, as exciting as changing the code, but this is important, uh, you know, and, and the second thing is that follow the triage processes, right? Uh, uh, the project should have some triage guidelines. If not, there are none, you know, you should uh, propose one, uh, but the guidelines should clearly state about, uh, you know, the priorities based on the issues, uh, when to close the issue, right? Uh, who should own the issue? Uh, you know, home to the for, home to forward the issue, and if there are support questions, how to handle those questions. Like in Kubernetes, there are uh, Stack Overflow uh, and server wall sites where they prefer to ask questions there. So you know, those kind of questions uh, are, are recommended to close, and you know, uh, have a reporter to look at the, uh, the the actual sites where they can easily find the answers or ask questions. Um, this actually gives you good visibility uh, across the community, and I, you know, when I, I always found it a good learning opportunities as well because you're looking at the different areas of the project, so that helps you to learn a different part of the project, right? Um, you're looking at the issue, you you try to reproduce it, uh, uh, and you know if it's bug, um, you, you say so, right? Um, and if, if even if you uh, think you can fix it, you provide a fix as well. But it can be a really good learning, uh, personally. Um, 
And the one last thing I would like to mention is, uh, you know, when you're working with open source project, uh, any project, if you're using the project, uh, <clears throat> you know, make sure you also contribute back, right? Um, you know, I met people uh, in a time to time at different uh, conferences, I'm like, oh, we are using this project. Uh, uh, it's great, you know, we run into some issues, we fixed it uh, in our local environment uh, and everything is good. But, you know, if you find some issues, if you fixing it locally, you know, try to, um, you know, create a, a pull request and, you know, uh, try to make the project better, right? Or if you don't have the time bandwidth, then at least report the issue, um, contribute in any way you can. So that way you make the project better. And, you know, by making project better, you actually helping um, yourself as an user as well. Uh, and that's the right thing to do. Um, all right, I think we are at the time limit. So thank you so much. Uh, if you have any questions, please reach out uh, to me and we can, uh, you know, we can try to discuss.